I'm sure this is some of the few non-LARPing stories you will ever hear on this board, and I don't like telling them, but today's a good day. I will set the scene for you. Mum and Dad bought a piece of property out in the boonies of northern Manitoba, Canada. This property lies on the last major east-west road going north. What I mean by that is north of this road, there is nothing but forest, swamp and lake. And I mean nothing for hundreds of kilos, not one community, until you hit the Arctic tree line, which is why I'm in slash out slash ist. The property is on a crossroads of roads going southeast-west. Four miles to the east, there is a main road. West is 50 kilos of dense swamp to the next town. 12 miles south is the little town. We had one neighbor, two and a half miles west of us. Great hunting. Be my older brother, 1 a.m.-ish. Decide to have a smoke. Go outside. Decide to let his new puppy molly out with him. Wild animals roam abundantly, as you might guess. So he takes the spotlight and didn't want to grab a rifle, so grabbed a hammer. I and B for hammer? What's that going to do? He's a retard. He wants to see how far the new spotlight will shine, so he walks to the road. From the driveway, he shines the light south. The puppy whimpers and cries, shaking, looking north. He turns north. Next to the stop sign stands this tall, grey, hairless creature standing as a man, two legs, two arms. Unusually long arms and legs compared to torso. Dark, sunken in eyes, wide slit for a mouth. Proportionate head so this ain't no eye. We measured later, using me as reference to the stop sign the next day, and we figure it was nine feet tall. It stood motionless. My brother froze in horror, but was finally able to scream, Fuck no! Fuck no! The creature grimaced and jerked as if expecting something, but it stood its ground and didn't move. My brother knew if he attacked it, he would lose, so all he could do was run. He ran his ass off. The dog was already long gone. He looked back because he didn't hear anything behind him as he ran. The creature was in the cattails in the ditch, attempting to hide, but it was massive and pale compared to the scenery, and its eyes glue white from the light. He kept running, found the dog cowering near the porch door, picked her up and let her sleep in his bed that night. He didn't sleep, of course. He tells us all the next day hysterical. I later seen this same creature along with some of my family, and a few locals did too after asking around. I know it's a fucking meme, but when I seen it, and by my brother's description, it was exactly pick-related, however, the pick is like an adolescent, because the one we seen was much, much larger. If anyone wants to hear the other stories I have of this thing, I'm happy to share only if you believe me. I know what I seen, and I know my brother isn't lying. I hope this story is useful, or at least interesting for one of you outdoorsmen, I know we can't be the only ones who have seen them. Also, we have no name for it, so names are welcome, or even what you think it could be. We just call it the Creature Keck. Hello, all I should also point out this thing is quite thin and spindly. So sorry, friend, no goo for you. Wake us up and do what? Call the police. It wasn't violent, and it was just as horrified as he was. Shoot it? Find it first now that it's spooked. Would have at most three armed men out there in the bush trying to hunt something that knows the forest like the back of your hand. Not only that, being frozen in fear, not sure what you've seen or what it's capable of. Maggots like this who've never been in a situation even close and make assumptions is why the real bush people keep their stories among themselves. Live off deep in the holler. Drive out to one of my backwoods spots to go camping. Three hours into five hour hike before I reached my camping spot. Nice day, fresh air, clear skies, occasional animal noises in the distance. Getting that oneness feel with nature. Hear some rustling up a hill off the path I'm treading. It's a fucking dude, he's stumbling down the hill. He's walking funny, like a puppet on strings walk. Very weird looking. My memory kicks in. 
There were no other cars parked in the offshoot that leads to the forest trail I'm treading. We were on the edge of fucking nowhere. There's just nothing out there for one hundreds of miles from the direction he came from. It's just fucking forests. That's when he started to laugh and called out, Hello there! That's when I unholstered my gun. This dude stumbles onto the trail. He has a real jovial demeanor about him. I racked the slide. Gen 1S and WMNP. No safety. He waves as he walks towards me on the trail. I aim at this guy and yell, That's close enough! The dude is completely unfazed with me pointing a gun at him. He just keeps laughing and waving. Weird ass gait to his walk, almost serpentine swivel to his legs, but his body didn't move right, like puppet strings were moving him. It was uncanny as fuck. I've heard enough stories about things in the woods from Slash X Slash and other places to know how this shit goes down. I will fucking kill you! I am not fucking around! I say this really fast and loud. If there is any semblance of sanity in this creature, I want them to know they will soon be ventilated. Undeterred, he keeps Wiggle walking towards me. This is after I've pointed a gun at him and threatened to shoot this motherfucker. I can clearly discern his facial features. He looked normal enough. You'd be forgiven for mistaking him for human for sure if it wasn't for that weird-ass walk. He was wearing a sweater and jeans. Just a regular dude by any other account. Said dude is less than 10 meters away at this point, and he continues with the laugh and disjointed conversation starters. It's nice to meet you. Internal monologue goes fuck it, and I dump five or six rounds of 40 into this guy. I pause for a moment because he stops walking after those shots. No, no. I think I hit him. He wasn't bleeding though. He didn't scream or wince or nothing. He just stood there. Then he falls. He settles in an awkward position like his joints and bones aren't connected right. It's like someone put human together without knowing how skeletal structure works. Swear to God. Crinkle man, contorted into a mess of shapes on the trail floor, zipped off like a fucking bird and disappears into the underbrush. I hear a rapid pitter-patter of steps that gradually fade into the fucking woods with twigs and branches snapping as Crinkle Man gets further away. I noped out of there hard. It was already 2.30 and by 4.30 it's going to be getting dark in the forest. Or darker than I'd feel comfortable being with Crinkle Man out there. On the spot I dumped my tent, sleeping bag and everything. I was okay just leaving there because I needed to turn a three hour hike into one hour and thirty minute hike. There was no fucking way I was going to get caught in the forest after dark with fucking Crinkle Man Wiggle walking up to my ass. Fuck. That. With the bare essentials on my person, I double-timed it back the way I came. Luckily, it was mostly downhill, so I wasn't fighting gravity like when I came up. I took care not to run too fast, because if I twisted my ankle or fell and hurt myself, I knew I would be well and truly fucked if Crinkle Man was creeping around. At 3.45, the sun was already starting not to show through the trees as much. Slight panic had started to get into me, but I remained calm and kept with my brisk pace. I got back to my car at fucking 4.20. I looked back into the forest and apparently my eyes had adjusted to it because it was dark as fuck. 20 meters back into it, and the shadows just created a cave-like darkness into the nethers of the underbrush. Got in my car and got the fuck out of there. Uh. I don't know what that thing was, but it wasn't going to be wearing my skin. I don't know if that thing is still out there, but I don't camp in that neck of the woods now. I'm not going back for my tent or other kit. It's just not worth it for that stretch of woods. Every time. Too many bears, mosquitoes, and redacted in my area. David's data indicates armed hunters, especially those with GPS transponders, are molested the least by weird shit. Did a bear population reduction thing a few years ago. 308 was pretty effective. Usually one. Two shots with expanding bullets. Plus one, two. The skull to make sure. Doing bear removal. Nearing dusk. Just dark enough to have fuck all for night vision. Returning to camp. Walking tree line next to field with eight feet grass brush. Here's something barreling right for us through the grass. Random small black bear comes into tree line, sees us, and turns directly for us. 
Bang! Knocked Black Bear down about 35 feet away. About to start walking towards it for kill shot. Here's something bigger coming. Huge fucking brown bear out of nowhere. Grabs Black Bear and drags it screaming into the grass. Uh, we could hear the Black Bear being eaten alive for about 10M. Pretty sure the Black Bear was running to us for protection. Very spooky and the Black Bear was mostly devoured in the morning. They don't like the smell of silver. Interesting pasta. I about shit a brick and turned dead white the first time I heard a tree knock 30 miles upriver. Middle of nowhere. Always pay attention to that feeling of being watched or your hair starts standing up. Keep a deep respect for bears. They can move quietly when they want to. Big, soft feet. What stretch of woods? I'd go for that free tent. If you can go to the edge of the world. 55.204, minus 132.764, 108243193767. You'll find a spot to park your car along the way where the road ends, I'm sure. Peek around that spot and you'll see a path into the woods. Follow it and let it take you where it will. If you follow the path, it'll eventually take you to this lake, 55.2064934093602626, minus 132.6859812285114148. That was my original destination before Crinkleman intervened. The path to the lake isn't a beeline, and don't try to turn it into one. The trees will blend together, and the forest will swallow you up if you stray from it, so stay the fuck on that path. I didn't try to hide my shit away, so if you don't come across it, there's a good chance someone got to the stash before you. It was about three years ago now. If it is still there, the weather might have worn it down a bit, but maybe you can salvage something. The path might branch a bit. If you encounter the three pawns, 55.184-1733670992, minus 132.7025-1412577716, you're gone too far south. Where's the stash? I was in a panic when I ditched it, so I don't recall the exact location. Somewhere around here, maybe? I know that doesn't seem that far, but the path winds up and down around hills and shit, and it'll lead all around. 55.1-975020626400055 minus 132.7024-2349330072 Before I ran into Crinkleman, I'd say, the lake made for a good camping spot, but now... Well, good luck, stalker. I didn't think of it as a bad place before I ran into Crinkleman. Whatever's in that gully can stay there as far as I'm concerned. An excuse to fly to POW this summer. Fuck around and find out anon. Looks like a lot of elevation change. No close airstrip, so I'll have to borrow a four-wheeler or get dropped off. I see a trail on the north side of the creek valley that gets a little closer to the lake and higher up. You're saying there's another on the south side after the bridge? Bear to the left on the four exable portion and park at the end where the hill flattens on the south side of the valley. I see potentially two or three creeks to cross. Are you still in AK? Are you still in AK? Not anymore. I have some friends who still live up there, but they're up in Anchorage. You may have to recruit a local guide to get you close. I see a trail on the north side of the creek valley that gets a little closer to the lake and higher up. Speaking of guides, a local native, some admix of a mutt from old Haida blood, had told me when I was scouting out the location some five years ago to be mindful of waterways north of the bridge. I reckon he meant this particularly spot. 55.2-1679-9160985595-100-32.7178587512. Minus Maybe the old guy just liked telling ghost stories, but basically he talked about forest spirits, disappearing people who venture off in that location, and that for my safety, I should stay on the south side of the ridge and avoid those creeks and waterways to the north if at all possible. I figured he meant there were bears and bull mooses up there, but I never ventured on that side of the ridge, so I never peeked to find out. You're saying there's another on the south side, after the bridge? Bear to the left on the four exable portion and park at the end where the hill flattens on the south side of the valley? Something like that. You may have to scout the area for a little while, but you'll come across an 
opening in the forest. It should go without saying, but animals made that trail, so there's a decent chance you may encounter some when you go down said trail. Some friendly, some not. Maybe even a crypto freak like Crinkleman. Whatever happens, be prepared for a fight. And remember, there's nothing else out there once you go down that path, but you in the wilderness. Unless you see someone else parked up there, you're the only human in that part of the world. Maybe I wandered too far north at some point and angered the spirits. After Crinkleman living up there didn't feel the same. I couldn't enjoy the forests like I used to, at least up in AK. Not that guy, but please describe what happened after you shot him in more detail. You say he made off like a bird? I know it doesn't make sense, but that's the best way I can describe it. Maybe the way it moved made me think of a bird. I was pumped full of adrenaline at the time, so maybe my perception was fucky. A few seconds prior, I was under the impression I may have just killed a man. A weirdo for sure, but possibly a man. And it was probably more the speed at which it took off from a seemingly prone position that gave me the bird impression. It reminded me of when you frighten a bird that you don't realize is there and you hear that quick whip, 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 whip of its wings, and it's gone a second later. That's not the sound it made, but that's the association my brain made with its movement. It didn't fly, though. It just moved really fast and disappeared into the brush. The whole encounter of it coming down the hill, me pointing my gun at it, shooting it, and the thing disappearing into the woods didn't last more than a minute total. Probably less. Didn't spend that much time on the ground crumpled up, maybe a few seconds before it darted off. When I shot it, or believed to have shot it. Like I said, it didn't react how you would expect it to. It stopped, stood there for a few seconds, and then it crumpled into its crinkle form. No cry, no wince, no shudder, just an unmoving mass, like someone snipped the strings on a marionette. And then, it was gone. Now that I recall, on my hike back to my car, the forest was dead silent. It's because you fired a gun, dumbass. I mean, maybe, but for the whole hour and a half hike back. No birds singing, no bugs chirping, just pure fucking silence in those woods. It was like a completely different forest on the way back to my car. As it got closer to four o'clock in the afternoon, my vision was slowly being whittled away by the ever-decreasing light slipping in from the setting sun. It wasn't that great before, but at certain points I couldn't see more than 20 feet around me. Everything beyond that range just melted into a murky blackness of foliage and underbrush. The whole way back, I had a strong desire to just run like hell, but I knew I'd either trip, get lost, or end up winding myself and having to rest. I had no choice but to tread quickly but carefully and make good time back to my car. All I could do was follow the trail. I'd look behind me every so often and expect that thing to be there creeping up on me, but there was never anything back there. That was for the best, I think. I don't know what I would have done if that creeper showed up behind me on my hike back. I think I would have broke nervous and bolted in a panic. Probably would have gone off the trail and got lost in the underbrush. I don't want to think about what might have happened after that. Not those Anons, but did it move on its human hands, elbows, or...? It was too fast for me to tell. I would say its whole form jumped into the bushes. Trying to make sense of how any part of it moved would be pointless, because to me it was just a blur. If anything, I would say, it didn't need its limbs to move. Its limbs moved because it did, like something trying to LARP as a living creature. Did it leave any fluids behind? I mean, if it didn't bleed, then the UTF man. I didn't see it bleed when I shot it. To be fair, I didn't go and investigate where it fell, so if it bled after the fact, I wouldn't know. After the shock of the moment passed, I autistically did the math in my head because I knew I was no longer camping in the forest for the night. How many hours of daylight do I have left, and how fast I could move if I shredded extra weight? As soon as I was ready to mobilize, I very hastily started hiking back to my car. I didn't stop to sky gaze or admire trees, or none of that shit like when I was hiking earlier on that day. I was 100% dedicated to getting back to my car as quickly and as safely as I could manage. Here's one from about a couple of years ago, out in a desert riding quads with a buddy, 
trying to track down old mines for cool rocks, maybe an artifact or two. Locate one that's shown on the USGS topographic map we have. Entrances are covered with gates like pick related. Smell like nasty sewage coming out of the main entrance. Mine has been taken over by bats. Break off some neat marble from a nearby outcropping and move on. Look for another mine I heard about from a guy at a local rock show. Supposedly a good place to find nice malachite samples and the occasional piece of native copper. Supposedly a few miles from the previous one tucked away behind some rough terrain that keeps most off-roaders and casual explorers away. It's off my map, so I need to try to remember the landmarks he gave me. Sure enough, there is what was at one point an old access road for a mine where the guy said it was. The road has been basically destroyed over the years, with several parts of it collapsing into deep ravines and washes. I've been riding since I was a small child, so I'm very experienced with rough terrain. That buddy has been riding off-road for several years as well. Still get to a point where we have to hop off the quads and continue on foot. Have to scramble through some rough terrain for about an hour, but eventually find the mine. Buddy doesn't like going underground, wants to sift through the tailings instead. I'll stay out here in case you get trapped, Anon. Not true dwarf doy peg. Enter the mine with walkie-talkies for communication. It's a pretty good-sized mine, everything looks pretty solid, and there aren't any unusual smells. Get about 50 feet in, pass a few minor side passages, find some old minecart tracks, follow them further in. Tunnel splits, follow the tracks and find some old rusty piping. Also find a few old boxes labeled Apache Powder Company. Boxes look mostly full of dust, but there are a few sticks of dynamite inside. Don't want to risk accidentally setting off unstable old dynamite, so I head back to the fork and take the other tunnel. Find a kick-ass malachite deposit. Map. Work at it with my pick and eventually get a sweet chunk of fibrous malachite out. Put it in my backpack and follow the tunnel back until it stops. There's a small room in the back, nothing much to see. Suddenly catch a giant whiff of something decomposing. Look around, don't see anything obvious. There's a small exploratory tunnel in the back that looks to have partially collapsed. Shine my light in to check it out. Dead rabbit torn to pieces inside. Still in the process of decomposition. Decide that this mine has been fun, but I'm now done with it. Radio buddy and say I'm done and coming out. Hear him yelling something down near the entrance. Ask him what he's yelling about over the radio. He replies that we don't need to use the radios if I'm just dicking around near the entrance. I tell him that I'm probably a good hundred feet back in the end of a mine tunnel. There's a pause and he comes back talking much quieter. Anon, something's moving around near the entrance. Tactically shit bricks. Ask him if it's a coyote or anything. It's barely out of the range of his light and he won't go past the entrance, but he's certain it's not a coyote. Well, fuck, I'm trapped. He says he'll try and hit it with a rock to scare it into a side passage. Get my rock pick ready. Really wish I'd bothered to bring my gun. He gives me a three, two, one countdown and there's a pause. Suddenly, loud ass scream. Sort of like you'd hear from a mountain lion, but deeper and more ragged. Fuck! Buddy yells that it ran into a side passage. I'm already running. Book it as fast as I can without tripping. Entrance is in sight. Buddy is visibly freaking out. Glance into a side passage as I run past. Catch a glimpse of eye shine and something pale and hairless. Asterisk sprinting intensifies asterisk. Meet up with Buddy, we both take off. Can hear something thrashing around in the mine. No longer care what it is. Cover the previously hour-long hike in maybe 15 minutes. Jump on quads. Ride way faster than was safe. Make it back. Decide that while that, we probably don't need to visit that one again. Still got my malachite, though. Pick-related. We did end up checking it out again, armed, a few months ago. Someone had collapsed the entrance, and there were a bunch of warning signs posted in the area. It's possible that there's still a vertical shaft somewhere that's uncovered, but to my knowledge, nobody's getting into that mine again. Previous pick is my trusty quad and the bat-infested mine as of a few weeks ago. Up the hill behind it is the gate from the first post and the marble outcropping, which you can kind of see to the left.
Okay, I have one that happened to me quite a while ago. Be me, 21, it's late August, and my senior year of college is starting. Enrolled in a hiking and camping class as an easy way to fill some gen ed credit stuff. Class is all obnoxious freshman guys. Regret dot JPEG. Two junior girls join for second class. Class breaks to groups of three, and they ask me into their group. One has a boyfriend, the other is a six tenths who's giving me serious DTF vibes, and generally seems chill end up hiking and hanging outside class. Make plans to camp nearby one weekend. I pick an easy local trail and camping area near a small lake. Search. Show off my ability to cook over fires and enjoy the scenery, and even dip in the water. It's still reasonably warm in early September. Lie down and progress from snuggling to sex twice. She needs to pee and I go out with her and stand watch. Hear rustling slightly, point flashlight at it. She screams. I don't see anything and assure her it was an animal. We go back to the tent and I show her me carefully zipping the flap closed and turning both pulls into the tent. We snuggle and end up having sex again. Her hips are hurting since we're in round three, so we switch to me behind her and while I'm looking down at her, I then look up and through the tent wall, I swear I see a light in the woods, not at us but moving across. I figure it's a night hiker and I'm also not going to stop railing a girl to investigate a light in the woods. Finish, and it's the furthest thing from my mind. Lay awake and cuddle her. She's asleep quick. I doze off, but wake up quickly. I realize I desperately have to piss now. The main door is facing the lake, and she's basically in front of it. There's a second door that has a clump of cedars directly by it, but I sneak out that way. Stand by the trees and look at the moon and stars reflecting on the lake while I piss. I'm bare ass and it's starting to cool down due to the time of year and no cloud cover. I turn and walk over to the opposite side of the tent, passing the door facing the lake, suddenly thinking of the noise and light earlier. In the moonlight where the woods is more open, I see movement when I stop. can literally see a human shape crawling sort of angled through the low, brushy shit. Can't even tell which end is which or clothing color, just a shape slow, crawling debate saying something or shining the light. Honestly, feeling borderline panic as I consider all the implications. See a head pick up, realized it's a person or humanoid crawling backwards, now staring at me. My skin is crawling. Realize I'm literally naked in the woods, staring down unknown assailants. Crawler still hasn't moved since picking head up. Jump to tent and grab zipper. It sticks. See that it's four inches up and tangled in the nylon. Realize this is the zipper I had made a show of sealing inside. Nearly screamed. Run to the other side and jump on. Have hatchet and knife out of bag and don't sleep. Packed out early. I sometimes wonder what and why someone was out there. I also wonder if me staring someone down bare-assed scared them. I can only hope. Can you tell us what campground this is, or what the name of the lake is? Or just the general area? Central VT near Killington or Rutland areas. Hello Slash is X Slash, Northern BC and on back. I made a little thread a while ago about some experiences, but realized I forgot one of our local spoops. My favorite place to go in the world is deep in Nizga territory. There's a luscious valley with a lot of old volcanic activity. After you drive past the old lava beds, you come to a fork left to Greenville, which is coastwise. There's some hot springs and the drowned forest that is a sight to behold. The local indigenous populace are very friendly and have great stories. This is about the Green Lady, a local spirit that lives in the heart of the Nizga Valley. Enter our indigenous friend's uncle. Let's call him Dennis. Dennis decides to go mushroom picking. Pines, also known as Matsutak, are a gold mine there. You can make $400 in a day if you know where to go. Dennis is putting along searching for them white buttons. Dennis hears baby crying. Shit bricks. Dennis already knows who this is. She approaches, green baby in one hand, 
other arm outstretched. Dennis starts to walk backwards, knowing if he turns his back, he's chopped liver. She's gaining serious ground, zoned in on her prey. Dennis knows if he wants to get out of this one, he's going to have to try the old legend. Dennis waits for her to approach. He can hear her speaking. Dennis swipes her baby. She screams, but keeps her distance now. He's got her and she knows it. Dennis holds the baby, backing towards the tree line. The green lady starts tempting him with promises in exchange for the baby. I'll promise you wealth. He refuses, keeps backing up. I'll promise you a hot wife. He refuses, keeps backing up. I'll promise you fame. He keeps backing up. Green lady is getting frustrated. Dennis hits the tree line, gently puts the baby down, and runs to his house. Loud, ass scream. MP4. Dennis looks out his window, sees Green Lady going back into the forest with her green baby. First time green texting this story, and first time in more than a decade, so bear with me. Be me, PM went on. Family fag taking them way out in a woods LARPing during early COVID lockdown, planning on a week out. Wife and kids are way into it. No general area where I want to set camp, but it's two miles or so off the out of the way spot. I parked, ruck out with a heavy load to mark camp in the tree line on a long stretch of beach. Come back quick and empty. Kids want out of the damn car. Second trip in, whole party hikes out with most of the remainder, but I know there will be a third trip for me. Camp is adequate for their tastes. Leave wife, old cut down Remington Model 31 with number four buck and sidearm. Kids have already located and secured clubs and spears and started erecting their tent. Put on West German chess rig, sling PTR, hoof it back to car, ring ring dad calling. Put him on speaker and continue on course. Tell him where we are, chat for about half the walk back. All quiet on the Western coast. Grab remainder of gear, water, stove, plinking ammo can. Try and double time the trip back with 70 plus LBs of awkward bullshit. Fail, but made it most of the way. Notice after breathing slowed that the forest is nearly silent. Bear area, record numbers of cougars since dog hunting became illegal. Stay alert, stay alive, rifle at low ready. Forest gradually resumes. It sounds shrug, drop gear at camp, jump in lake with kids. Life is good, Dutch JPEG, build a fire, meal prep, clean up, sling food 25 up a pine tree, ghost stories, s'mores, and a little whiskey for the grown folks. Kids are beat and go to bed first, maybe three hours after sundown. Wife and I stay up just enjoying the time out of the house. Wife getting frisky around midnight, 10 sex, sleep hard. Woken up at 2.45 by something sounding large moving through the woods to the west. Embers are still going. It should fuck off. Listen for about 15 minutes, hear nothing. Drift back to sleep, shuffling noise. Close, not a raccoon. Sit bolt upright aim. Tonfo 10 millimeters loaded with meme woodsman RDs and awkwardly aim in direction of noise through the fabric and tactically listen. Wife still sleeping but she wears double ear pro when she shoots. Sensitive hearing. Sorry, baby. If it's a bear, it will fuck off after sniffing around and coming up empty. Don't want to startle it with the kid's tent closer to its path than I was. Tense but collected. Reach over to grab battery pack floodlight and prepare to make ready to execute a tactical tent flap exfil. IT fucking speaks, in my dad's voice. Husky, heavy, breathy, garbled word salad but it's my fucking dad. Shitbricks.gif, freeze up, paralyzed by fear. Side note, this has never once happened to me. I've been shot at, jumped by some faggoty Korean faux mafiosos, held up twice once at gunpoint, and had several close calls with death. I've always been able to keep my cool. Not this time. Wife sits up worried and snaps me out of it. My family needs a warrior right now. Jump out of the tent, Turn and hit the flood lamp toggle with the barrel. Something dark, hairy, low to the ground, but still substantial in size, about 30 YDs from me crouching in the undergrowth between two pine trees. Bright red eyes. Fuck this, fuck this, fuck this, fuck this, fuck this. Cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. 
empty 14 plus one, one CM strong in its direction panicked, but I know I walked a few of them into it. It takes off on two legs, shifting its gait to all fours like nothing I've ever seen. What the motherfucking ever-loving fuck? It clears line of sight before my wife can come out of the tent. Honey, get Moth Rifle. Kids start crying, wife freaked. I'm just scanning the woods and trying to keep my heart from coming out of my mouth or ass. Feed the kids some bullshit about a bear I was scaring away. Can tell they aren't buying it. I tell the wife about everything but dad's voice. Wife and kids calm down after 15 minutes, still dead tired. They crawl into the tent with mom. Keep watch until daylight, draining the flood right around sunup. 6 a.m., wake the senpai up. Tell wife we are bugging out. No complaints there. Walk the fleeing route it made for a few hundred yards. Broken stocks and twigs, trampled brush, but no blood trail. I fucking hit it, though. Walk the family back first, made one nervous return trip, and said, fuck the consumables. Wife greeted me exiting the tree line with the 31 pointed at me, and I'm not even mad. I still don't know what it was, and I still get goosebumps thinking about it, but I had mostly forgotten it until a couple weeks ago when we were down in AZ going through the Navajo Nation, and I saw someone, likely a drunk or a tweaker, crawling up under an overpass and started talking skinwalkers with the wife. It strayed into our camping trip, and I let the cat out of the bag about Dad's voice. She got really tense and said that's what woke her up that night. She knows she heard him too, but she thought I'd think she was crazy. I reminded her that I was the one blasting the foliage. Thoroughly spooked out, though, does anyone know where I can buy silver jacketed hollow points? A small part of me has the urge to go back out there with the boys. Anon, yours is the second story I've read of something large with dark hair that stays low to the ground and mimics human speech. Can you be more specific on what park this was in or the general area? In the other thread, some folks were talking about getting together to go out and fighting evil beings in a woods. Well, Kay, I have a story about doing just that. Be 18, fresh out of high school, no job, have all summer to fuck around. Joke with cousin about going out and hunting monsters. After much deliberation, we decide to go looking for nasties. We tell our parents we're going on a camping trip. Cousin finds a few guys with spooky stories on the internet, a select few are down with us coming by to have a look. Not really expect anything, but pack up SKs and a few hundred rounds of chink surplus ammo. My cousin, his friend James and I, hop in my cousin's truck and head up to the Upper Peninsula, since we had two leads from that area. Continued. First place is a joke. Dude suspects a baddie of some sort is tormenting him. Shit is just coyotes. Next day, head to next place, now shit gets serious. Landowner dude tells a story about how he and his friends were camping way back in the woods and that he was stalked by some sort of humanoid near an old abandoned house. In a woods landowner leads us out to the place, packing a 30-30. The forest seems unusually silent, we set up camp. That night, I wake up to the sounds of shooting. Jim is outside with his Mossberg shooting into the dark says he couldn't sleep and saw something scurrying around on all fours checking out the camp. Calm dude down, we sleep in shifts. Next morning we find blood near the camp. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Eat breakfast and walk around for hours until we come to an abandoned house. We decide to check it out. Check out ground floor and upstairs first. Don't find anything but old furniture and shit. We need to go into the basement. Basement is pitch fucking dark. Draw straws, I get the short one. I have to go in first. On the third step down, a gut-wrenching scream rings out from the basement. I fall on my ass from fright and slide down a few steps before catching myself. A humanoid figure on all fours is bounding up the steps. It has dark brown skin and razor teeth try to shoulder skis. It gets a few steps in front of me before I can shoulder my weapon. Cousin hits it with 357 fucker is hardly phased. I kick it, knocking it back just enough to shoulder my S keys and mag dump the thing. After much convulsing, the thing stops moving. And I shit you not, the thing turned to dust. It turned to dust right in front of my goddamn eyes. The fucking thing was screaming the whole time. It was unlike anything I had ever heard. 
We let the landowner know what happened and we left. We don't really talk about it anymore. Sometimes while I work or go to school, I get the feeling that I was born to protect people from things like that. I haven't gone looking for monsters since, but I feel like working and going to college is a waste of my time and that I was put on earth to hunt these things. Okay, I have one that happened to me quite a while ago. Be me, 21, it's late August, and my senior year of college is starting. Enrolled in a hiking and camping class as an easy way to fill some gen ed credit stuff. Class is all obnoxious freshman guys. Regret.jpg. Two junior girls join for second class. Class breaks to groups of three, and they ask me into their group. One has a boyfriend. The other is a six-tenths who's giving me serious DTF vibes and generally seems chill end up hiking and hanging outside class. Make plans to camp nearby one weekend. I pick an easy local trail and camping area near a small lake. Search. Show off my ability to cook over fires and enjoy the scenery and even dip in the water. It's still reasonably warm in early September. Lie down and progress from snuggling to sex twice. She needs to pee and I go out with her and stand watch. Hear rustling slightly, point flashlight at it. She screams. I don't see anything and assure her it was an animal. We go back to the tent and I show her me carefully zipping the flap closed and turning both pulls into the tent. We snuggle and end up having sex again. Her hips are hurting since we're in round three, so we switch to me behind her and while I'm looking down at her, I then look up and through the tent wall, I swear I see a light in the woods, not at us, but moving across. I figure it's a night hiker, and I'm also not going to stop railing a girl to investigate a light in the woods. Finish, and it's the furthest thing from my mind. Lay awake and cuddle her. She's asleep quick. I doze off, but wake up quickly. I realize I desperately have to piss now. The main door is facing the lake, and she's basically in front of it. There's a second door that has a clump of cedars directly by it, but I sneak out that way. Stand by the trees and look at the moon and stars reflecting on the lake while I piss. I'm bare ass and it's starting to cool down due to the time of year and no cloud cover. I turn and walk over to the opposite side of the tent, passing the door facing the lake, suddenly thinking of the noise and light earlier. In the moonlight where the woods is more open, I see movement when I stop. Can literally see a human shape crawling sort of angled through the low, brushy shit. Can't even tell which end is which or clothing color. Just a shape slow, crawling debate saying something or shining the light. Honestly, feeling borderline panic as I consider all the implications. See a head pick up, realized it's a person or humanoid crawling backwards, now staring at me. My skin is crawling. Realize I'm literally naked in the woods, staring down unknown assailants. Crawler still hasn't moved since picking head up. Jump to tent and grab zipper. It sticks. See that it's four inches up and tangled in the nylon. Realize this is the zipper I had made a show of sealing inside. Nearly screamed. Run to the other side and jump on. Have hatchet and knife out of bag and don't sleep. Packed out early. I sometimes wonder what and why someone was out there. I also wonder if me staring someone down bare-assed scared them. I can only hope. Can you tell us what campground this is or what the name of the lake is? Or just the general area? Central VT near Killington or Rutland areas. Be me. Never really believe in Ilmeos. More of a Sasquatch guy. PA always told me to watch out when I was a boy. Was never anything though. Grow up. Be on a hike looking for Squatch. Out there with the boys. And some ladies too. We drink and shoot shit. There's a quiet native dude that hangs out with us. He uses a self bow. All his arrows are handmade. Pretty cool guy when he talks. Won't touch booze though. Call him Mike. Known Mike for a few years. It's usually him and I doing stupid shit in the woods. Two other guys are cool. James, other guy insists we call him Duck O. Not sure why, 
Ducko and James have GFS. The GFS brought two other women. Women aren't important. IDK their names. One's P-Hot though NGL. Go deep in the woods. Where the Squatch resides. Set up camp and split up to set tree cams. Go W slash Mike and two extra women. Ducko and James go with their women. Hot woman is cool. Can actually attach the cam to a tree trunk. Other one's a ho. Ho is trying work her slut magic on Mike. 28519411. Mike knows better than to dabble in white devil pussy. Ho just stops. Like frozen stops. Mike's giving her the raised eyebrow. Cool lady is staring too. Feel uneasy. She's not even breathing. She goes up. Very fast. We all run. Fuck the cams. Drop them and run. Mike's really quick. Distracted. Looking up. Ho is T posing in the sky, just a dark silhouette. Trip. Eat shit. Mike is leagues ahead of me. Cool lady jumps over my sorry ass. She leaves my ass to die. Get up and start running. Look back up like an asshole. Silhouette is gone. Run into the back of someone. Mike and I talk about everything leading up to camp. We're running on the path and remembering Ho. We don't remember how we got back to camp. Want to get cool lady to talk? No, she has to remember that. Go back to fire. All the women are gone. Start asking Ducko and James what happened. They tell us they can't remember anything past hiking out and then having fun with their ladies. Just remember being back at camp with food and beverage. The women come back and tell us they're going to sleep. They do just that. Stay up with the guys for a bit and drink beer. It's not that fun, so we call it a night. Slept all night. Wake up. Being in a tent at the crack of dawn is a unique sensation. It feels fresh. And not fresh at the same time. Lot of noise outside, though. Sounds like everyone is already up. Must have overslept. Check watch. It's 7 a.m. Wonder WTF everyone is doing. Open the tent. Groups all walking around in their skivvies. Dead-eyed and drooling. Just walking around in circles. Here are the tent unzip. Mike sticks his head out with a WTF's look. Get out of my tent. Start yelling at our retards to chill out. Ducko is making grunting and whiny noises. James is lifting his arms up and down like he can't explain something. The women may as well be chickens, just walking around and looking wide-eyed, but hollow. Mike says we should leave them and fuck off immediately. Really with Mike on this one, but James and Ducko drove all of us. Don't want to steal their stuff. Mike agrees, but they won't wake up. Get an idea. Shoot a tree. It's satisfying. It's also effective. Group comes to... They're yelling. Want to know why I'm shooting. They only become more and more confused. And none of them know why they're in their underwear or outside. Mike tells them to get dressed and pack their shit. Mike gets his bow and straps a quiver to his belt. Have small pistol and big pistol. James and Ducko get their rifles and sidearms. Ho also brought a gun. We pack. Mike and Lady are in front of me. Ask why they stopped. Looked past them. Ho is frozen, T-posing in front of us. Come to back at camp, sitting around the fire with rations cooking. There's coffee brewing. Ducko James and their GFs are at camp too. We're all there. It's evening now. No one remembers what we did with the day. Eat and drink quietly. Talk with Mike later. He remembers what happened. Lady and Ho don't. All right, I promised. And now I will deliver just for reference. I'm currently 20, but at the time of the story, I was 18, just around the time COVID started getting bad once again. Not great at Green Tech's deal with it. Be me 18 in school means nothing, because COVID basically gave me a free pass to graduate, as I no longer was forced into doing the curriculum. Decide I want to go in a woods and be away from society for a while. Decide to go to some BLM land and fuck around. Bureau of Land Management for you who don't have it in other states, it's basically open land to camp on and etc., but not any facilities for modern luxuries. Have a shitty Turk shit shotgun in 20 gauge and decide to bring it along. Also convince my girlfriend, 
who's three years older than me to buy a pistol and let me borrow it for the trip-based Jericho 941 FS and 9 MEA, for those who care. Didn't want to get raped by homeless druggies, so I kept it on me at all times. Camping, eating the baked beans and etc. Normal shit. No spooks just yet or anything. Nights were peaceful and slept comfortably in my tent. A couple of days in after deciding to go into town for the day, come back to destroyed tent. Thankfully, I left nothing of value at my campsite other than just my tent because setting it up is annoying. Oh well, I'll sleep in my car. I'm sure some druggies got mad after it was empty. Decide as well to not stay there as well. To not stay there since not trying to get mugged in my sleep or have my windows broken a less visited part of the land and stay there. Go for rest of day, just be kind of bummed about tent since it was pee expensive. Do nothing for rest of. First night, he's sleeping in car, have intense feeling of being watched. Something is near me. Shrug it off as just being spooked since tent got fucked. I've been camping since I was a baby, so not really scared of woods at night since I'm smarter than the average bear and was in Boy Scouts since forever. Can't shrug feeling of being watched, so just take some melatonin and drift off into sleep. Wake up in a cold sweat and swear for just a second. After I woke up, I saw eyes leering in through my window. Sit up and look around my car and see nothing at all assume it was just a hypnagogic hallucination from my groggy mind. After calming myself down, fall back asleep. Wake up and step outside my car to pee and set up camp stove for breakfast. After starting to boil some water for oatmeal, look at my car to see a giant scratch along the side as if someone keyed my car in my sleep. Get even more mad to start feeling that this trip is cursed to ruin all my shit. Eat and nothing out of the ordinary happens again till nightfall. Up reading one of those military survival books, pick related. In car with flashlight cause, I don't want to run my car or maintain a fire. Hear a death squeal from a rabbit and freak as I hadn't even encountered a small animal other than hearing random birds calls till now. Assume a coyote or something has done well to hide, and so I step outside of my car and yell fuck off to scare anything away from my camp. Immediately hear a quite angry sounding screech. Fuck that dot JPEG. Hop back in my car and lock doors, recheck my pistol, and pull shotgun out from under back seat. Stay up for a considerable time, checking my watch every couple of minutes. Eventually decide I'm being a pussy and should just sleep, but keep my shotgun by my side. Sleepy times. Wake up from my car bouncing up and down as if someone is walking on my car. WTF AV. Immediately hop up and look at hood and trunk, not seeing anything. Huh? Check my 360 radius and see nothing. Suddenly, it's as if a sharp nail is tapping methodically against my roof. Motherfucker thinks he can spook me hell, nah? Grab shotgun and put my back to door and push it open to blast this motherfucker on my roof. Fall on ground and try to acquire target, but nothing is on my car. It thinks someone might be in woods throwing rocks, so grab flashlight and pan around looking for someone. Nothing. Fuck this hop in car and stay up till dawn, I'm not leaving till daylight but also not trying to get murdered by hobos. Finally, daylight approaches and I hop out and collect my garbage and assorted junk from around my new site. At this point, I'm so tired of getting fucked with, I decide to unreasonably hunt this dude messing with me. Decide to find another campsite, but set up a decoy sleeping area as if I were going to sleep under the stars instead of my car. Set random shit under a blanket and make a campfire, roll a log seat over to make it look legit. Once again, hear and see nothing till nightfall. Incognito anon time, I'm hiding in my car, barely able to see the decoy sleeping area. It's around midnight when I see a large man walk over to the decoy bed with some type of cudgel in his hand, start whacking the decoy decoy. Splinter cell conviction time as I pop out shotgun in hand with handgun tucked in pants. Remember how I said my shotgun was Turk shit? Pull trigger asterisk click asterisk. Nothing. Gun doesn't fucking fire. 
I'm about 6'2", pretty lean at 165 pounds. Man is easily 70 or taller, definitely not a goat man or skinwalker, but fucker is ugly as hell. Smells of shit and ironically copper for not being a skinwalker. Looks almost Neanderthal in nature, and his large club doesn't help the comparison. Drop Turk shit and whip out the pistol, putting terrible shots in stomach area and whiffed one into club arm. It hear that terrible screech from the other night and connect the dots. Fuck this, I'm leaving. Funnily and luckily enough, we both retreat him into the woods and me into my car. Drive 90 till in town, not really able to sleep that night. Don't return to campsite till morning. Thankfully shit is all there. Shotgun I left is smashed, but oh well. Blanket and my other random junk is also fucked goddammit like $500 worth of shit ruined. Collect what I can, and scouts honor leave no trace cleaning up all the mess I made. Figure police won't help, so just go home dumbfounded at my interaction with this caveman. Told my girlfriend, and she doesn't believe me. Thinks I took acid or something and had a crazy last night of hallucinations. No satisfying ending, never heard of a caveman or druggie found dead or anything like that around there? Sometimes still hear tapping on the roof of my car in the early morning or late at night when I'm parked, but it's not like it followed me home. TLDR in a woods Anon meets caveman and ruins most of his camping kit by deciding to hunt it. Now, so what do y'all think did I encounter a crazy tall druggie or legit caveman BTW homie? Looked like that Geico caveman pic related. I was around the Phantom Canyon area of Colorado if you know it. And I think after I moved, I was off BLM land or something like that. And glad you enjoyed my spooky experience very possible. I caught it mid-transition, but as stated, I don't think I killed it, so we'll never truly know. Maybe I should go back and see if it'll try to get me or fight me again. I'm investing in a P good R10 soon, so maybe 308. Win would take it down? I'd be the first to get me a Sasquatch-type creature on the news. Stated in another post, but it's the Phantom Canyon area of Colorado. And interesting, have any articles about it? No articles. But a few years ago, there was a guy on YouTube who had the severed head and foot of one of those things. My memory is fuzzy on the details, so don't hold me to this. But he lived on a large family-owned plot of land in Tennessee or Kentucky or thereabouts. IIRC, both he and his dad had to team up to kill it. This thing was messing shit up on their property, and they'd had enough. They kept the head and foot frozen. The reason they had only those parts was because the bones were so hard to cut through. He brought both parts out only briefly, because he didn't want them to start thawing. But the video quality was very good. It looked real as shit to me. The shills around here would all say it's an art project, of course, which has become the default glowy response for all physical evidence, cryptid or otherwise. I don't think the guy was very smart, though, because he kept referring to it as a Bigfoot, which it was clearly not. The head was obviously that of a giant humanoid, something that managed to survive the Great Flood. There's been some info being spilled especially in slash poll slash threads about ancient giants living underground, and we all know the story of the supposed red-haired giant that our military battled in Afghanistan. We also know that the Smithsonian has been confiscating and destroying bones of giants for over 100 years. Fucking fuckers. So, when it comes to calibers, I think .308 would be the minimum. After all the green text and nope threads we've read, I think we can assume that 5. 56 slash. 223 just doesn't cut it. Yeah, definitely remember something like that IIRC. No one could disprove the video. So definitely agree. It could have been something along those lines. And interesting, haven't heard of the Smithsonian destroying bones deep sounds like an obvious cover-up. And with Colorado being so mountainous, I very well could have set up near its cave the first night and it decided to follow me and see if I was trouble or not when I moved camp seeing as it destroyed the decoy body I set up and intended on killing me also with the minimum of 308. I can agree to put it down permanently, it would have to be 308, but my 9mm pistol did seem to puncture it or harm it in some way. I remember there was a medical doctor of some kind who did a review of it and he said it looked real to him as well. Logically speaking, it made more sense that it was real 
because that guy would have had to shell out some major money to have intricate models like that made, and the person making them would have had to know intricate details of internal anatomy, like vein pathways and shit. That's a lot to go through to try and make a few bucks on YouTube so long ago. Smithsonian destroying bones. Oh yeah, those assholes have been doing that since the late 1800s. I can agree to put it down permanently. It would have to be 308, but my 9mm pistol did seem to puncture it or harm it in some way. Yeah, we are talking about a humanoid here and not a squatch. If you hit it in a soft area like the neck, you'd probably be fine with a 5.56, but if you miss, well, you know how hard it is to hit a moving target. There's an old fag on slash K slash who insists that the round you should be using is a 0.45, 70. The new Henrys are fucking cool. You can mount optics and lights on them, and you don't have to worry about damaging a fine wood finish on a messy op like this. Hey, Stalker. Hope you enjoyed the video. If I could trouble you, give a like and a sub. It really helps the cause. And since you're already here, why not watch the next video? Anyways, stay comfy. Cortisol is bad for you.